in this video, I'm going to show you, uh, take a first step at least, to work with uh, histograms and quantitative data. In the latter sections of this PowerPoint file, in the last checkpoint, I asked you to construct a histogram um, and interpret the histogram. Histograms are appropriate for quantitative data because they provide ranges of values in which the data can fall. If I go back to StatCrunch, I want to open up a uh, new file. And uh, that new file uh, has to have quantitative data. So I need to open up a new StatCrunch table. So I'll say open StatCrunch. It opens up a clean table for me. I want to load the data from a file. And that file is on my computer. And uh, let's see if I can think about um, a file that has quantitative values in it. Okay, here's a file, foot height data. This data set lists the foot size and height of students in a variety of my classes. Click load file, and the file is loaded into StatCrunch. Notice I have uh, the gender, uh, the height of that individual, and their foot length. We'll just focus on height. Again, see how many people we have now? 131 individuals. To construct a histogram of quantitative data, click on graphics, and click on histogram. Click on the column you want to construct a histogram of. You can actually click on both. It will construct two histograms for you. But I just want to look at height in centimeters. Click on height. Then click on create graph. What this, what this did is this created a histogram, which I can resize depicting all of the heights of the 131 individuals that are in this data set. This is a frequency histogram, so it depicts uh, approximately 100 or uh, two people or so are between 120 centimeters and 130 centimeters. Approximately five, four to five people are between 130 and 140 centimeters. You don't know where they fall in here, you just know they fall somewhere in this range. If I want to get actual counts in each category, I can go to Edit, click on Next, and say Display Values above each, above each bar. Create Graph. And now I've got a, a slightly, I may be able to say exactly how many fall in each category. 14 individuals in this data set fell between 140 centimeters and 150 centimeters. Now, for histograms, occasionally what you'd like to do is you'd like to vary the width of these bars. I think actually this is a pretty good looking histogram, but say I wanted, I thought I'd like to go have a, a little finer grain of detail. These bars are called bins. The bin width for each bin here, 130 to 140, is 10 centimeters. The lowest value is the starting point. So I will still start my bins at 120 centimeters. My bin width, instead of 10 centimeters, let's say 5 centimeters. Create the graph, and this is a little finer grain of, of detail. Notice that you may say, well, I like that better. It provides a little more information about values in each category. but you can overdo fine grain detail. For example, if I have bin widths of 1, create the graph. I don't really like that graph that much. If you have a, a bin widths that are too wide, say the bin widths are 40, that doesn't provide much information either. So there's a, a balance between the detail and the, and the uh, width of the bins. Personally, I liked, uh, I, I preferred 
the bin widths of 10 centimeters. Now, this is a frequency histogram. To construct a relative frequency histogram, click on Options, Edit, and instead of where, instead of type, remember, back was where I, uh, this first pop-up was where I selected my column. Click on Next, and I select my histogram where I want to start my bins, bin width. If I go to Frequency, I can convert this to a relative frequency histogram and create graph. Notice the shape remains the same, but now instead of frequencies in each column, it's presenting the relative frequency or the percentage in each in each of these bins. So 28.7% of my students are between 160 and 170 centimeters. Personally, I prefer the uh, frequency histogram but that's how you can toggle back and forth. Lastly, the instructions on the PowerPoint indicate that you are to interpret this uh, histogram. An, interpreta an interpretation of the histogram simply is a description of a histogram for someone else. The uh, first, uh, first item you want to describe is the most frequent category and other frequent categories. So I, s I would think that the uh, the most um, the, the most frequent category of heights for students is between 160 and 170 centimeters. Values between 150 and 160, 170 and 180, and 180 and 190 are also fairly common. The uh, second uh, part of the description is the minimum and the maximum values. Notice you're tempted to say that the minimum value is 100, the minimum height or the, the shortest student in this data set is between 100, is 120 centimeters, but you really don't know where this individual falls. They could be at one end, 120, they could be at the other end, 130. You don't exactly know where they are in this, in this bin. So all you can say is that the shortest individual is between 120 centimeters and 130 centimeters. Notice my description invo invoked the context of the problem. I'm talking about heights of students. The tallest students are between, and there's two of them, are between 190 centimeters and 200 centimeters. The third category asks you to describe the shape of this histogram. This histogram is somewhat subtle. Um, if I could eliminate these lower categories, I'd be tempted to say it was normal. This histogram seems to be slightly skewed in a negative direction. In other words, the values are sort of um, accumulating here in the upper end and tailing off in the lower end. The last category is outliers. Outliers, remember, are not values that are infrequent, but values that are separate. In this case, Shaquille O'Neal was not in our data set. Shaquille O'Neal would be somewhere, oh, let me go back to the, uh, to the, to the histogram. Shaquille O'Neal would be somewhere up about 250, 260 centimeters. He would be separate from the rest of the group. That would be considered an outlier. In this case, there's no value that is separated from the rest of the group. So in this case, there are no, there are no outliers among the heights of students.